I'd like to tell you about what I learned when I did a Bible study on Romans 6. What is it? When I did a Bible study on Romans 6 and on the context of Romans 6, I learned that we cannot abuse grace, that we cannot trample underfoot the blood of Jesus. And I learned that once saved always saved is an antinomian heresy that is split in hell wide open. We cannot continue to live a life of sin and still be saved. Wow, that is absolutely true. I also came to the same conclusion. The antinomian heretics constantly ignore Romans 6, and then when they do take a look at that chapter, they take it way out of context just to suit their flesh-centered heresy of once saved always saved. I know. The antinomian heresy of once saved always saved is literally a doctrine of the flesh. The bus is here, let's go. Okay class, today you will be taking a test on intelligent design. Intelligent design is a true fact that is proven by the Bible. It is true that God created the earth, humans, animals, and everything in nature. God created the earth in six literal 24 hour days and then rested on the seventh day. God created the heavens and the earth according to Genesis 1-1. On the other hand, Darwinian evolution is a worthless fairy tale that is easily refuted by the Bible, and the Bible is 100% true, and if a teaching contradicts the Bible, then the teaching is false teaching. Darwinian evolution is also a damnable heresy that is splitting hell wide open. Now get started on your 30 question test on the true doctrine of intelligent design. Hey dad, why do several people teach the oneness heresy? John, the reason why they do this is that they twist scripture to suit their fabricated doctrine of oneness, and obviously, twisting scripture is wrong. Last Thursday, I had an encounter with someone who was deceived by the once saved always saved heresy and the oneness heresy. What was it like? It aged like milk, since the guy falsely accused me of heresy, he called me stupid, and he also called me outside of my name by calling me an idiot and a coward. Wow, that guy was so rude all because you exposed false doctrine. Also, which false doctrines did you warn him against? I tried to warn him against the once saved always saved heresy and the oneness heresy, and it fell on deaf ears, since after I warned him, he did the name calling and he defended the once saved always saved heresy and the oneness heresy. Since he was defending the antinomian heresy of once saved always saved and the oneness heresy, he was fighting the truth rather than fighting for truth. Dad, what you are telling me about that dude reminds me of 2 Timothy 4.3. This is absolutely true, for example, there are people who reject the fact that you need to repent of your sins and they reject this essential fact in favor of the antinomian heresy of once saved always saved. And there are people who reject the essential doctrine of the trinity, and they reject the trinity doctrine in favor of the oneness heresy. Thomas, what have you recently done a bible study on? 2 Timothy 4, 3. The other day, I was in the park with my dad and he was talking about someone who was deceived by the antinomian heresy of once saved always saved and the oneness heresy. The person who was deceived by once saved always saved and oneness attacked my dad and called him outside of his name. John, your dad got persecuted, since he was being attacked for exposing the antinomian heresy of once saved always saved and the oneness heresy. I also remember when your dad did a sermon where he exposed the antinomian heresy of once saved always saved and the oneness heresy. I obviously know that your dad who is Pastor Adam is our pastor. You are right. I am enjoying my walk with Christ. Me too. I am 16 and living for the Lord. Jesus is my everything. Hello, what's your name? John. Hi John, I'm Haley, and I go to your school. I have one question for you. Is one as true? Absolutely not, since oneness is a damnable heresy that is splitting hell wide open. The Bible verse that refutes the oneness heresy is 1 John 5-7. Also, take a look at the evidence on my phone that oneness is heresy. Wow, thank you for telling me. I'm glad that I did not fall into the oneness heresy. You're welcome. Lord willing, I'm going to preach a sermon about the dangers of having a haughty look and being covetous. That will be a nice sermon for tomorrow's service, Lord willing. I love it here in Gillette, Wyoming. It is a really nice place here and I love the outdoors. I remember back in January when we went on a trip to Jackson Hole for his birthday. It was a nice 11 day vacation. Now that we are in the middle of April, we're getting warmer weather now and spring is my favorite season of the year. Spring is also my favorite season of the year. My birthday is also in the spring as it is on April 11th which was last Saturday. Okay class, today's date is Thursday and if you need the date then it's on the board. It is the 16th of April, 2043. Today you will be taking a test on the surface area and volume of combined 3D shapes. The test is 33 questions and you have the whole class to take the test. The last 3 questions are bonus questions that are extra credit. 
Lord willing, the junior field trip is on Friday, the 15th of May, the last day of school is on Thursday, the 21st of May, and there is also an early dismissal on the last day of school as well. Anthony is such a broke loser, a nerd, and a dork since all he does is wear garbage clothing and I'm tired of that retarded moron. Colton, not everyone is as rich as your parents are. Stop looking down on us because it's not cute and it's not funny. Ha 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 ha. Anthony is the ultimate loser of the year, all he does is bore the heck out of everyone with his unnecessary answers that no one asked for. He is also a dumb Jesus freak. E, 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 this is hurting my feelings. I am tired of being treated like garbage. I am sick of this rude baggage. Colton, stop bullying Anthony. You know better than that and you are not allowed to use slurs in school and discriminating other students because of their religion will not be tolerated at all. Go to the principal's office now. Everyone else, get started with the test. Hey Judah, I'm being bullied in school by a mean rich student named Colton. He always brags about his new expensive clothes and shoes, and he makes fun of me for my intelligence. He also made fun of the way I dress as well. That is terrible that he is doing this to you. Colton also makes fun of me for my faith as well, and I choose not to be sad about that because I know that Christians who are persecuted are blessed as proven by Matthew 5 10 to 12. Persecution was also the topic that we talked about in youth group last night. I also operate the Bible club in the school that you go to. Lord willing, I'm going to start an anti-bullying campaign tomorrow. Alright Bible club members, let's begin the anti-bullying campaign. I am ready to begin the campaign. This campaign has been built on prayer and prayer is truly powerful. Jesus Christ always wins and wickedness will never win. Happy Saturday morning everyone. Today's church service will be about the dangers of covetousness and a haughty look. A haughty look is where you look down on others and as Christians we should not look down on those who are less fortunate than us. Proverbs 6 16-19 tells us about the six things the Lord hates and then the seventh which is an abomination. Of those six things, a haughty look is one of them. We also should not brag about anything that we have because it is wrong to do so and you should not try to make other people jealous. Jealousy is a sin and if you attempt to try to make other people jealous then you're just as guilty as the people who actually do get jealous. We also should not brag about anything that we have. We should be grateful for what we have especially since there are people who are less fortunate than us. That was so funny when Anthony was crying like a giant baby. That campaign was so dumb. When I get back to school from suspension, I will beat the heck out of Anthony. Hey moron, get the heck out of my seat you big fat loser. I was here first and it's no big deal. E, 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 please stop it. Shut the heck up you stupid bum. You are poor as heck and you live in that dumb small cabin while I live in a million dollar mansion. I am a lot better than you. I have a lot more money than you and you are poor ha 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 ha. Stop bullying because bullying people is a grave sin. Shut the heck up you stupid Jesus freak. You are one of those idiotic Jesus freaks from that crazy Bible club. Colton, come to my office now. Colton, I saw on the camera that you were using slurs and was beating Anthony up. You must stop with this nonsense because it's not cute, it's not funny, and you know better than this. Anthony is such a broke bum and he is always talking about that idiotic Bible club. He is a poor Jesus freak who is stuck eating ramen noodles while I get to eat caviar and filet mayan. Colton, I told you that slurs are not allowed in school. We have rules against bullying and bragging about the things that you have. You are not allowed to bully people and you are not allowed to brag about the things that you have. You are suspended from school for another week. E, 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 Colton keeps bullying me all the time, and it has now gotten worse to the point to where I was beaten up, and I now have a black eye. Whoa, Colton is a big piece of work. Lord willing, in the Bible Club we are going to make the anti-bullying campaign even stronger. We are a week into the campaign and let's make it stronger. Alright club members, let's get this campaign started, we're also showing a Christian movie during this club time as well. Let's get started. Amen, I can't wait to see this. Hello little sis, the campaign was a success. How is the 9th grade for you? Freshman year is quite nice so far and how is 11th grade for you? My junior year is amazing. Junior prom is coming soon. I recently asked my date to prom and she said yes. I saw you when you asked. 
You were much more bold than the average dude who asks a girl to prom. Most dudes who I see are normally afraid to ask a girl to prom. I know. Lord willing, Junior prom is on Friday May 8th and it takes place at the park. Our parents already rented the limo for me and my date. Lord willing, the prom starts at 4 p.m. The winter formal that we had earlier this year was really nice. You went with your date and I had a nice time with my date. This is an amazing time. I know, and the sermon that your dad preached two weeks ago was really nice. A lot of people need to know the truth. Junior prom is really cool, and that ride in the limo was nice. The rent for it was at a really good price too. Hey twin sis, it is quite a nice day here in this new town. Now that our family moved here we will have to try to find a biblically sound church since the majority of the churches preach damnable heresies. Our dad said that if we don't find a biblically sound church that by time we try a fifth church then we will do a home church. How many times have we tried so far? Only twice. The first time we left because they taught easy believism and modelism. Then the second time we left because they taught egalitarianism. So this would be our third time trying. I'm gonna work on a sermon exposing the damnable heresy of egalitarianism. This rebellious false gospel has sadly become very popular in the church as it is a flesh-centered doctrine just like easy believism is. This sermon will be for the Wednesday night service and then the second part will Lord willing be done on Sunday morning. Happy Wednesday night everyone. Tonight I will expose the damnable heresy of egalitarianism. Let's begin with 1 Timothy 2 12 to 14. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Those verses have a literal context as what the saying is that women cannot be pastors in the church and they cannot usurp spiritual authority over a man. In the next chapter it says that if a pastor is married then he must be the husband of one wife and if a deacon is married then he must be the husband of one wife. The next chapter also says that a pastor must not be a new convert so we know that women cannot be pastors in the church and women cannot be deacons either. Only Christian men who are mature in Christ can pastor a church and only Christian men can be a deacon. This topic is a salvation issue because approving of female pastors or female deacons and denying the biblical roles of marriage will put you on the path to hell. Any doctrine that affirms sin is a damnable heresy. Likewise all lascivious doctrines are damnable heresies. This is the reason why egalitarianism, easy believism, the prosperity gospel, progressive Christianity, and the little God's heresy are damnable heresies because they are all lascivious doctrines. Egalitarianism is a rebellious false gospel that is absolutely worthless. There's a difference between a damnable heresy and a flammable heresy. A flammable heresy is a false doctrine that is only erroneous in areas that are secondary issues. Likewise, believing in that doctrine will not put you on the path to hell but there is a chance that you will be led astray. On the other hand, a damnable heresy is a false doctrine that is so erroneous that believing in it will put you on the path to hell. For example, easy believism, egalitarianism, modelism, the prosperity gospel, progressive Christianity, and the little God's heresy are damnable heresies. That was a nice church service. I asked the pastor what all doctrines he teaches and he is a biblically sound pastor. Lord willing we will go to that church now. I am so glad about that because in the previous town that we lived in had no biblically sound churches in the area. It is a blessing from God that we found this biblically sound church. This is quite a nice summer. The previous school year as a teacher was phenomenal. We had a lot of students who came into the schools after school Bible club searching for answers and they got the answers that they were searching for. The 13th year students had an amazing time in the big field trip to London. I recently applied for a job for the position of an art teacher at a high school in this town and I got hired yesterday. Lord willing, I start working there when school starts back. I also plan on starting an after school Bible club there too. Jesus Christ is my everything. We love that biblically sound church. The pastor there is really nice. We also know that Lord willing we will begin 13th year in the upcoming school year. The big field trip to London will be really nice. I know. We will get to have a fun time and see the London Bridge, the Big Ben, the Buckingham Palace, etc. Students for that field trip ride a shuttle bus instead of a regular school bus. I found this amazing Christian movie that we can watch. It's called 16 and Living for Jesus Christ and it is really amazing. Creation Forever TV always makes biblically sound movies. The guy who founded that ministry has biblically sound teaching. Our family has attended some of their green carpet events online and they are really nice.
Ha 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 that scene where the guy burned a marshmallow is hilarious as heck. This movie is a lot of fun. The coffee here is really good. This goes really great with the raspberry jelly filled donut. This is really good green tea. Another great thing is that this place has buy one get one free deals for tea on Tuesdays and Fridays and since tomorrow is Friday, we will get to use that amazing deal. How about we go on a family trip to the beach tomorrow since tomorrow is Friday and it will also be a nice day on top of that. Yes, let's do it. Lord willing tomorrow morning at 10am we will go to the beach and it will be a lot of fun. What a nice morning. This time at the beach is gonna be really nice and since we're only 10 minutes away from the beach. Lord willing we will go to the beach both today and tomorrow. We will be having loads of fun for the next two days.